I saw it coming. Judy was holding a plastic cup of white Russian from the bar in one hand while steering with the other. She rested her drink on the wheel and turned halfway to take the joint from Mark. Our eyes met. I could see she liked me. Then I saw the curve coming. I shouted, but it was too late. She was going fast and made too sharp a turn. We spun and flipped, rolling twice before skidding to a stop on the driver's side of the car. The momentum of the rolling car had kept us in our seats, the beer bottles loose and flying around. When it stopped, we slumped down onto each other. I was on top of the pile in the back seat with Mark below me and Joey on the bottom. In the front, my sister Debbie lay on top of Judy. For a long moment, we stayed that way, not moving. It was very quiet. Then from the bottom of the pile, Joey started yelling. It's gonna blow, it's gonna blow, let me out, it's gonna blow. He squirmed and clawed out from under us, stepping on me and then Debbie, while forcing the door open and climbing out. Debbie started to follow him, but he dropped the door on her. She fell back down onto Judy. Bracing myself against the front seat, I pushed the door up and climbed out. I stood on the side of the car and held the door open for the others. Joey was still yelling, it's gonna blow, get out, get out. Before it blows up, it's gonna blow. When we were all out, we stood back from the overturned orange Mazda and stared at it. It didn't blow up. I looked around. Let's try to turn it over before anybody comes. We walked up and started rocking it. Rocked it until we had enough momentum to push it over. It bounced a bit on the tires before settling. I climbed in. It smelled like gas. I was afraid maybe it would explode if I turned the key. It coughed a few times and then started up. Judy was too shook up to drive, so I said I would, even though I still didn't have a license. The side view mirror was gone and the windshield cracked. The steering wheel was sticky with Kahlua and milk. I put it in gear and we limped along making a dull thumping sound. One of the wheels must have been bent. I wasn't so good with a stick. We were lurched along the curves of a Maronic road, hoping to avoid being seen by the cops. When we got down into the flats, Joey jumped out. He walked off fast with his hands stuffed in the pockets of his jeans, his shoulders hunched. We dropped Mark in Larchmont. He hadn't said a word since we rolled over. Debbie asked him if he was all right. He just shook his head and turned towards his house. I drove to Shore Road in New Rochelle and parked in front of Debbie and Judy's apartment. As we got out of the car, Debbie said, stay here tonight, you can sleep on the couch. Yes, stay here, Judy agreed. I just wanted to leave, to be by myself. I feel like walking, I'll walk home. It's so far, they said in unison. I just want to walk. I turned to go. You can take my car, Judy called out. I looked at her, then at her beat up Mazda, and back at her again. She burst into tears. I turned and walked away. It was late and the streets were empty of cars. I crossed the post road and headed over to Palmer Avenue. 
Walking along the sidewalks under the street lights, I watched my shadow grow large and then small again over and over as I made my way home. <laughs>